Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We come to you this wonderful Sunday, and especially coming to you from uh, St. Christopher's Church on in Menengai Parish, and we want to thank God so much for what God is doing. We are grateful that the Lord has been very gracious to us. It is such a kind thing to receive kindness from God and mercy. You know what the Bible tells us every day, that his masses are made new every morning. And even a morning like this one, we are very grateful that the Lord has made it possible for us to be the one that are included on his works, and especially his works of grace, his works of mercy, his works of blessings and favor. And therefore, we behold this day with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank God for the ministry of uh, music. We thank God for the uh, music and also the, the songs we have just heard and the words in those songs. We know that God ministers to us even through music. And now let us prepare ourselves to hear the word of God this uh, wonderful morning. And I know that the Lord will continue to bless us together. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are our Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end, and you are all-knowing in all situations, circumstances, you are able to understand. You even know our condition and our situation this wonderful morning, how we pray in the name of Jesus, that as we share your word, you may come speaking through me, that I may be able to bring the oracles that are alive for you and for your people. Come and speak among us, speak to our situations, and bring a word that is relevant to what, dear God, you desire that we may know this morning. And use me, dear God, for your glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is quite a wonderful day, and it's a, an opportunity that we may be able to share God's word. It is always a big blessing to behold uh, the favor of God. Now, I want to thank God because of the Father that we have come. It's also important to mention that uh, the Lord has been good. My name is uh, Martin Wanjohi Kabiru, and I'm born again this morning. The Lord has been my uh, shepherd. He has taken care of me. I thank God because of the far he has called me. It is by his grace that I've come this far. Even on this time and season that are, are very, very new times for us. In fact, we call them the new normal. We are grateful that the Lord has not changed. Yes, times and seasons have changed. But the Lord has remained the same. And I really thank God because he has been dependable and even he has been faithful to my life even this wonderful morning. Now, brethren, I want us to share the word of God. I want us to share the word of God. And as we share the word of God, I want to remind us that this month of August, we have been dealing with an important um, uh, teaching on how we need to commit ourselves to the service of the kingdom. Now, Remember, we have been having a journey since uh, a few months ago, and we have been talking about issues of understanding uh, how God called us, and more so on the issues of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Then we moved on and we say that the Holy Spirit is supposed to action us to grow spiritually. We also talked on spiritual maturity and growth. And also now we also picked up from there. We also said when we are filled with the Spirit, when we have grown in the issues of the kingdom, then we need to respond to what God has already done. And the response is committing ourselves to the service, to the service of God and more so to the kingdom business. And this morning, I want just to come to you with a message that I've, 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 I've titled Totally Sold Out for God's Service. Totally Sold Out for God's Service. I want to read from the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1. And following. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and following. This is what the word of God says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than, than, you, than you ought, but rather thinking of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us have one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same functions, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. 
If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is distributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is readership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Brethren, that is the word of God. And we are very grateful this wonderful morning. And I want to take bits by bits of this uh, scripture that we have read. And I want specifically to concentrate, uh, to concentrate on this portion of the scripture that we may be able by God's grace to understand. Now, brethren, one of the most important thing that every Christian believer, a believer in Christ Jesus Christ receives is the call to the kingdom of God. Now, there can never be service before the first step, the step of calling. All of us, we are where we are in the kingdom and especially in the kingdom business because God called us. I remember Jesus telling the disciples and it's an amazing thing. He told them, do you know what? You never chose me in the book of uh, John chapter 15. You never chose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you may be able to bear fruits and fruits that are going to last. That has always been my encouragement in my life and ministry. That it is not me who chose God. It's not me who at least in one way or another qualified to be called to become a member of the body of Jesus Christ. It is by the love of God that he sought me, found me, called me, set me apart. And uh, after he sought me apart, he was able to set me apart. He was able to action me and to usher me into the issues of the kingdom business. And I want to believe, brethren, if there is one of the most important gifts that all of us may have, it is to receive the divine call of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage us, brethren, if you are watching or maybe following, or following this service, one of the most important things I should ask, have you received the divine call of our Lord Jesus Christ? Because that is the most important thing. There are people who have always loved the Lord. They have enjoyed the goodness of the Lord. They have enjoyed the peace of God and the blessings they are in. But they have never made a decision to accept the call of our Lord Jesus Christ. One, the call to give their life to Jesus. And number two, the call to accept Christ in their lives that they can be committed to the kingdom service. And therefore, brethren, it is important to say this day, I just want us to walk in a journey of that starts with the calling of God. Now, Paul... In this kind of a portion of the scripture, you remember from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 11, Paul is dealing with very important issues about the doctrine. By the way, he has sought out very many things. The doctrine of, the, of, a, of a election, that's what I was saying about calling. The, the doctrine of, a, of a justification, that when we are called by the Lord and we are justified, there is no more, there is no more condemnation to them who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes ahead and talks about the doctrine of salvation. He even talks about other doctrines, even the doctrine of sanctification. And by the way, when he had led with all these important doctrines, he comes to a place now that having received the masses of God, having received that which already God has done by his grace, not because of our light standing brethren, not because we are called and we were supposed to have been called by the way, he has just called us by his mere grace. Therefore, we cannot be able to receive this service with pride. We can only receive it with humility and submission. Because even if we do not even deserve, me and one person who know, we don't even deserve to be called sons and daughters of the kingdom. We don't even deserve to be who we are today. But by the grace of God, the mere grace of God, the Lord has done and has called us and has made us to be who we are even this morning. And for that reason, after he has spoken about the grace of God on taking us from the people who are nothing to people now who have a standing in the kingdom, men and women that are justified, men and women that have a promise, even the promise of Abraham, men and women that are now led to receive the, the salvation of God and the eternal life. Now he says, now there must be a response. And you know what, brethren? The response about the masses and the grace we have received can only be true when we commit ourselves to the kingdom service. And you know what? We have led through the, the man that the call to service, it is not something that we are just giving uh, services that uh, the, the ones that sometimes we are asked to, uh, to, 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 to give our service uh, out of uh, our, our street to time we have or all this, but we are called to serve. In other words, it is a command. And I wanted to get to us that the service of the kingdom 
It is a command to our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he gave the greatest commission. He said, go ye to the whole world and make discipleship for me. And he promised that we are not going to be alone. He said, and I will be with you to the close of ages. Now, brethren, I want to take you to three steps on how we are able to commit ourselves to the issues of the kingdom and more so that we may be able to be fully and totally sold out for the gods, for, for the service of the kingdom of God. And brethren, God desires that we may be able to give wholehearted service. We are supposed to give ourselves fully to him, that our services may be acceptable to him. They may be holy. They may be pleasing to him, that we may also find God's favor and blessing on our side. Now, step number one, with the verses we have just read in the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1, the Bible, the Paul starts by saying in, uh, in, in verses 1 of 12 of uh, Romans chapter 12, he says, Therefore, are you, are you, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. In other words, out of the mercies and the goodness you have received. Now, this is what you need to do. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy, pleasing to God. In other words, he says, this is the response of God's love and mercy. How can we respond? I remember one time David asking, what can I give to God because of the good things he has done? But he said, the only thing I can do is to lift my cup of salvation. In other words, now we are coming to respond to the things that the Lord has done for us. And one of the response Paul is saying that because in view of God's mercy, now we need to give ourselves. Step number one is total surrender. Step number one is total surrender. Now when we talk about total surrender, what do we mean? We mean that God is calling us that we may be able to give, you realize, there are times that people force us to give things. And sometimes we are manipulated, we are forced here and there just to give something. And sometimes we also give not willingly. But Paul is saying here, give yourself. It is a personal decision I need to make. It is not because I have been coerced by men or by anyone. It is a personal decision that I need to make to give myself to the kingdom, to give myself to the service of the kingdom, to give my body. And when he talks about the body, it's good to say here, when you look at deeply, it is not just talking about the flesh. It's talking about even life. You realize he's talking about a sacrifice. Sacrifices were laid at the altar, and one of the steps that was supposed to be done is to slain the animal. Therefore, there are no sacrifice that was supposed to be put at the altar when the, sacri the, the, the animal is alive. Meaning that it's giving, surrendering your whole life, surrendering your mind, all the faculties of your life. You surrender them totally to God. And when you surrender this to God, what happens is like you have given totally. You have surrendered totally. And that is the first step of our service to God. We must come to a place of accepting that I'm giving myself because I didn't even have a life. By the way, I was not even supposed to be alive. It's by God's grace and mercy that I'm alive. I was supposed to have been condemned to death. But by the mercies of God, that was saying, in view of God's mercy, then what I need to do is to surrender totally. I call on you, my brother and sister, as we prepare to grow in the service of God and in commitment to God's service, we must, number one, accept that we be able to surrender fully our lives to God, our mind, our spirit, our hearts, and all what we have, even our abilities, our skills, even our material things, that we must know that we don't live, but it's God who lives through us. And therefore, we must surrender. Step number two, step number two, is finding its total consecration. Total consecration. Now, you see what uh, Paul is saying here, that we give our bodies as a sacrifice, but he also says, holy. You know the word holy? means set apart. The word holy means consecrated. You know, sometimes even in a church setup, like now in our church setup here, there is this table here. This table is called altar table, but we call it the holy table. You know, when we call it the holy table, it does not mean that it was made out of some other different wood from the wood that made the pews or even the wood that made what we use in our homes, in our furnitures. Maybe it was even the same tree, but you know what happened? When this altar table was made and it was presented to the church, it was dedicated. It was set apart from just the normal service and the normal utility, and it became a praise that whatever is done on that table must be the service to the kingdom and also to God. And that's why it became holy. In other words, set apart. Do you know what God calls us when he calls us to service? Number two, the step number two is we must consecrate ourselves. We must present ourselves as holy, set apart, not indulged to the issues of the world. 
Not one foot on the world and the other foot on the issues of the kingdom. Not that we are living a double, a double life. You know, we are living in a world that at least double, double life is, um, is, um, is something that is coming and are taking as a wave into the world. You see, people want to love the Lord. They want to be called by the name of the Lord. They want to be called Christians. They enjoy to be in the midst of men and women of God. But at the same time, they want also to indulge on the issues of the world and sometimes sinful and wicked issues. But the Lord calls us now, view to the masses of his goodness and mercy. And brethren, don't forget that. We are not just serving, but we are serving because it is by the masses of God that he has called us and has been able to reveal the mysterious salvation of God. And because of that view, now we must be willing to be consecrated. Now, when we talk about consecration, these are things that we need to know. We must be set away from sin. We must be set away from being entangled by other issues of life. We must stop being entangled by the patterns of the world. And he says that we are not supposed to follow the patterns of the world. And what are the patterns of the world? The patterns of the world are selfish. I want to remind us, brethren, there is something that is taking up very fast about the service of the kingdom, the spirit of ce ce celebrity, that people do things so that they can have a name. People do things, and they do even kingdom service, that they can be seen as big men or men of uh, big names. That's why sometimes, and I have no fear to say that, that even some people call themselves that they are great men of God. Somebody say that we are supposed to always call ourselves that we are men of the great God. Because we have even exalted ourselves beyond the one who gave us masses and grace to become. Because sometimes it's about celebrity. It's about how many people have uh, given me a shout. How many people are liking my page. How many people are doing, are uh, giving uh, big word names for me. That is why sometimes we are cut and completely forget and we shift the service of the kingdom and the worship of the kingdom to become an entertainment and also a human fulfillment agenda. May the Lord help us that God has called us that we consecrate ourselves, setting ourselves aside. And that is the second step of finding service of the kingdom and being totally sold out to the service of God. Number three, step number three, it is, a, it is a, the total response to the service of the kingdom. The total response to the service of the kingdom. Now, on those verses, we are holding to that verse that we are leading, verses one. You remember that Paul goes and says that after being made holy, he also say, preaching to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. Do you know what, brethren? The ultimate reason why God called us, why he has called us through his grace, why he has been able to consecrate us and setting us apart is for this one purpose, that we may be able to become a source of worship to him. Now, what is worship? Now, worship is giving worth back to God. Meaning that whatever God has done to us, God always uh, wait on us that we may be able to give back that worth to him. How do we give that back worth to him? By acknowledging, by acknowledging that it is by God we are able to do what we do. When God gives you a gift and then God is giving you favor on it, then you realize it's not by your own strength and wisdom. It is not because of experience. It's not because of uh, anything that you can blag about. You are able to do it in humility because you know it is by the grace and enablement of God. And therefore, it requires us that we may be able to know that one of the greatest sacrifices we can give is sacrifice of giving back worth to God. And that is what we call worship. Now, when we talk about worship, brethren, we don't worship God the way we want. Amazingly. We never worship God the way we want. We can only worship God according to his precepts, according to how he has put worship to be done. And for that reason, that's why you realize that he goes ahead and says, this is the act of worship. And number two now, verses two now, he goes ahead and he introduces something very important. When we talk about worship, there are some things that he brings on. He says, if we want to give worship to God, number one, do not in any way conform to the patterns of the world. Brethren, our worship must be pure. Our worship must be set apart. Our worship must be holy. Our worship must be in humility. That we are not following the patterns of the world. 
You know the pattern of the word is about how to spirit, pride, celebrity, and all this stuff. But we are called in the different side that we may be able to do worship that is humble. Worship that it is to God, not to men. Worship that when the glory comes, you don't, you don't feel good. You know, it's good to feel good to be told good things and to be told how good you are and how good you are doing things sometimes. It's a good feeling for us. Humanly, by the way, everyone wants to be, even there is somebody who sang a song and said, everyone loves to want to and love to be loved. And therefore, when good words and loved words are said to us, we have, but we should always remember, not for us, not for us, but it is for the glory of our God. And that is what we call the third step is we must learn for us to serve God and be people who are committed to service. We must understand that that step of being holily, totally sold out in worshiping God so that we may be able to find a praise in what God desires. Now, number two, and I want to tell you now, how do we do this? And those are the three steps, by the way. Now, I said the first step is the step of uh, surrendering, total surrender, total consecration, and also total response. And that is what we call total response with worship. Now, very first, how do you do this? Now, he gives us a formula on how we are able to do these three things. For us to get to three those levels and steps, of service and being totally sold out for God, he also gives us a formula, a wonderful formula. And this is the formula, brethren. He says in verse chapter 2, verses 2, that why we should do it by the renewing of our minds, the renewing of our mind. You know, brethren, everything starts with the mind. If we do light in our minds, if we are able to do light on the things, if we are positive and uh, the, the, the attitude is light, you realize every other thing fall on its praise. Now, he says this, and this is very important, that we must have the praise of renewal of our mind. And the renewal of our mind, and that is the amazing thing, is like it is like metamorphosis. Now, let me tell you something that we learned in school and in science. When we talk about metamorphosis, it's something that is like, it is something that is coming from inside out. You see how the caterpillar is supposed to come out of its uh, cocoon. And I want to encourage us that what God desires of us through the word of God is that we may be able to transform. We are able to transform. Transforming from what? From inside out. That through the word of God, through the renewing of the word of God, that it changes our perception. It changes our attitude. It changes the way we believe and the belief of the word of God and the truth of the word of God. Then we are able to metamorphose. In other words, we are able to be transformed away from the, from the, 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 the patterns of the world in likeness to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is a good example to us. In fact, the example which is a, 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 the right example of how we need to serve. And Jesus become an example per excellence of how we need to serve the Lord. And uh, there is number two, uh, after we have said about the renewing of the mind, he goes out here and say, that transformation, number two, it is a transformation that brings us, reon, re, it is bring another uh, orientation, and we are reoriented. Re, re In other words, it, we are reoriented now from where we were used on the world, but now we get new orientation of how we are supposed to do things. Now, that can only happen when we accept and allow the word of God to work through us. Now, brethren, how do we do these things? It is only allowing God to renew our minds and then be transformed from inside out. And when we are transformed and we have gone through the process of sanctification, the process of growing and moving by and by, we are able to behold the grace of God. Brethren, it is important to know God is willing, and that is the formula we are given. And this formula, it has results. Now, allow me to talk about uh, four results very fast that we get when we are able to transform who we are and we have been renewed. And then it's like we are ready now to serve God in commitment and also in truth. Now, number one, one of the things that we need to know, the results are when we accept to be reformed, number one, what happens is like our services are acceptable to God. You know, brethren, it is not all services and sacrifices that are acceptable to God. You know, sometimes people are not told the truth. If the case about Cain and Abel is true and it's recorded in the Bible, it's good always to know not every service and every sacrifice we offer before God that is acceptable. God rejects some of the services. I have always seen even how we do all what we need to do, but we should always remember and ask ourselves, have we been able 
to be transformed and renewed in our minds that our services may find favor before God. And therefore, result number one of accepting the three steps and also allowing God to renew us and to transform us is our services are acceptable. You know, there is nothing as good as our services finding acceptance before God. When we are accepted by God, we find God's blessing. Number two, the services are pleasing to God. You know, the Bible tells us that it is a pleasing aroma that lazes from the altar all the way to the heavenly sanctuary. And when God hears the smell, do you know what he does? He does something. I remember when a sacrifice was given after the big rains, uh, the time of Noah. And you remember Noah after the, the floods were able to do uh, a sacrifice after that. And you know, when the, uh, when the aroma went up, the Bible says that God smelled the aroma and the anger he had about the world was turned around and he made a covenant never again to destroy the whole world through the waters. You know what? When the aroma arises of our service and our, and, our, and, our, and our worship to God, when we totally give ourselves fully and we are totally sold out to the service of the kingdom, we become a sweet aroma to God. And when we become a sweet aroma to God, the response that God gives to us is like he is able to change issues on our behalf. Our, the wrath that God had on our families and our land is changed alone. And God make a covenant of peace, a covenant of salvation, a covenant of deliverance, a covenant of restoration, even in our lives. And finally, we also see that uh, he also says about the discovery, he says, then he will be able to test and approve what God's will, his goodwill. In other words, God brings uh, discovery of his will. I've realized if we serve God faithfully and committedly, he is able to drop revelations to us and the revelation of understanding who God is to us. And when we receive those restorations, there is something that God does. His grace and favor is able to follow us. I want to encourage us, brethren, it is important to give service to God and to be totally sold out to the service of the kingdom because through it, we find new revelations about the understanding of our God. And you know what the Bible says? And those who shall know their God they shall do exploits. God will give us deliverance of our families. God will restore our marriages. God will open up new doors for us when we accept to serve God holy. And then he is able to bring discoveries to us. And finally, it's the understanding of the perfect will of God. I want to ask you, brethren, if there is anything as good and precious is to know the perfect will of God. You know, lives change when people know their purposes. When you truly know what you have been wired by God to do, when you really know what is the will of God in your marriage, even at this time and season, if you can only know what is the will of God and what he desires you to do at this time and season, there is nothing as beautiful as to know the will of God. And you know what he says and encourages us here? That we'll be able to know the pleasing and perfect will of God. Not only the will of God, but the pleasing will of God. And when we are in the will of God, we find God's favor. When we are in the will of God, we find God's blessing. When we are in the will of God, God is able to do more than we can imagine. May the Lord bless you, my brother and sister. Even as we make a decision this uh, morning to totally sell ourselves out for God's service. That we may be totally sold out for the kingdom business. And when we do that, even through uh, total surrender, total consecration, total respond and worship, and when we accept the renewing of our lives, we're also going to find the acceptance in our services. We're going to find the pleasing service of God and finally the will of God and his really perfect will about discovering even the knowledge about who we are. May the Lord bless us this morning. May the Lord do us good even as we continue to receive him in whatever we do. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you so much. Because a Sunday like this one, we would wish to commit ourselves fully to you. We know that there are challenges that come that we are not able to give ourselves fully to you. But there's our desire. May your kingdom come to break every barrier that stands between us and total commitment. That we may be totally sold out this day. Help us to make that decision. That we may be totally sold out to you. That Father, you may lead us to a place of service that will find favor before you. Acceptance. It will be a sweet aroma that you'll be able to come and confirm your will for our lives and about our situation. And bless us this morning. Bless our families. Bless our going out and our coming in. And that your favor will continue to be even our portion. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our brethren, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you to grant you favor and mercy. May the Lord bless you going out and your coming in. May he affirm the work of your hand. May the Lord fight all your battles. May he cause healing to your life and to your family. 
May he continue even at this time to be the one who provides to your needs according to his riches in glory. And may the Lord be the one who guards you from all evil. And may the Lord bless you indeed, even from heaven. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you for tuning in. May the Lord do you good. It is a beautiful, beautiful Sunday to uh, be with you and have you. And have a wonderful Sunday and the week ahead in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. <laughs>